Hey everyone, how's it going? Sid and Sean here with another Genetree Solar video. We also have a guest behind the camera as well. Today's the day, Sid is finally here. And we, our goal is that to get that 12,000 watt unit running. So we have a bunch of parts here and uh, I'm gonna show you exactly, and Sid is gonna tell you exactly what is involved here, what we're doing. So 12,000 watt inverter, obviously, we had some problems, you guys know that. So our problems were kind of a design limitation based on some of the parts that we use or carry over from a power jack inverter. You guys know that. So <clears throat> this is our Genetree Solar 6000 watt uh, main board here. And if obviously you guys already know, it looks very, very similar to a power jack main board. Now it is custom for us, for example, for caps. Powerjack doesn't use four caps, or they never have, even though there's a slot for a fourth cap. We also use uh, six FETs per MOS board. So this is custom to us, and it works perfectly fine for a 6,000 watt inverter. Obviously, if you were to take that past the 6,000 watt range, well, there's obviously a risk there, something could go wrong, but we have tested them all the way to 10,000 watts, and they seem to do just fine. Now then, this here, with a revision seaboard on top here, this is a new replacement for the Genetree Solar 6000 watt inverter. Obviously, I'll get you some close up shots here, but it is completely different in many ways. It shares some of the same stuff. Again, I'll get you some pictures, some close up shots here, but it's very similar to the PowerJack version. However, it is designed completely different from the ground up. So this is a new and improved version of the PowerJack 6000 watt, or well, the Gentry Solar 6000 watt main board. The small main boards obviously are not going in the 12,000 watt unit. What we started with on our 12 kilowatt unit is we started with something similar to this. You guys all know what this is. This is a PowerJack, what they call a 15 kilowatt main board. They used it also in their nine kilowatts of old. Uh, now they use two of the smaller main boards in all of their larger inverters, 15,000 watts and up. But this was the base design for our 12,000 watt inverter. We had the six FETs as normal. Now this is an older one, so we did not use this plate back here. This is older, I'm just using this as an example, but it is the, the very similar as far as uh, wiring and looks and so on. Uh, we opted to add a sixth cap on ours. PowerJack was only using five for their inverters. Uh, I did see a few six cap ones, but it was very seldom that I did ever see that. But this was the problem for our 12,000 watt unit. Mainly this right here and the way the place that was located, the distance this has to travel, etc. Sid? In essence here, what we're running into is crosstalk. So if the inverter is driving this pair here, this side right here is held on ground, driving this side, or it switches phase, this is held on ground, and this is switching. Well, the crosstalk is when this is switching up and down, the impulses through the board are turning these vets on, which puts a dead short across the battery, which caused vets to melt, things to blow up and everything. I am guessing, first of all, this is a major culprit. It's way too thin, and like I said in the forums and comments, they have the worst possible pinout possible or crosstalk. We have one side here and one side here, side by side, crossed together. Adding to that, we have the signal heat for this FET board starts here and goes all the way past this high current plane, all the way up to here. So we have capacitive coupling the entire length of the way, which is just a recipe for disaster. And with that in mind, this simply doesn't work for the 12K. So the redesign the signal wires are right smack in the center, and every signal pair is tightly coupled to each directly to each MOS board, so any coupling is on the same phase and not crossing. There is no crossing, and we're using shorter, fully shielded wires for the signals. So that seems in tests so far, I don't see any crosstalk, no problems whatsoever. So that is very good. Now, obviously, you need to come a long ways. Murphy's Law goes with you, so we'll see what happens on the real 12K inverter with this test board here. I'm expecting good results. 
Yeah, so we are still testing, obviously, designing. Sid did a good job designing this. There's uh, quite a big difference. Um, it's not just a redesign as far as where the traces go, but also you might be able to see on this side, yes, this is all just testing wire, okay? This is not what a production unit is gonna look like. This is this is a used to cable, six gauge. We just grabbed whatever would be appropriate. So the actual MOS boards, they're a lot thinner, as you can see. They're definitely thinner, which makes the entire board a little bit narrower. And, but yeah. You can probably see a little bit, a little bit of the difference there. Yeah, I'll get some shots for you so you can see it closer up. It's hard to see on video, I'm sure. Um, but um, all the resistors are actually underneath the control board, which is uh, the board. It's a, yeah. Okay. All the parts are underneath, so now nothing can fall. Like this right here, if you drop something on it, you got lots of room for trouble. Yep. You put them all on the back side. And additionally, a power jack MOS board only has the bottom plane of the board for carrying this 300, 400 amps of current. These boards are much smaller, so we have much less distance for the current to travel, and both the top and bottom planes are solid copper connecting power from here to the fits. And the parts are all way out of the way, so it's, it's much better in that regard. It's safer, although you shouldn't be opening your inverter up and dropping screwdrivers in it, but it's just an extra safety thing. Now, I do want to point out the caps. These caps here is something, this is the first time that we've tried this. These are 80 volt, 22,000 microfarad caps. And you can see the difference between a power jack 80 volt cap, this is 10,000 microfarads, and the two here. There's a considerable difference between the two, not only in size, but also weight. So with that in, and cost, and cost, yes, yeah. they are much more expensive. But, so, we actually designed this, or Sid designed this, with four of these caps per main board. I know it's hard to see with this uh, Revision C board sitting on top here, but there's actually four of these caps sitting here on the main board. You can see just how tall they are compared to a stock power jack capacitor. So, we only need four. That's what we're you know, guessing is that we're only going to need four rather than having six of these large ones per main board. We believe that we're going to be perfectly fine with just the four, but you can see that we probably would have a hard time fitting six in here. I don't know, Sid, can you fit six in yeah. here? No, the six won't fit. Yeah. But the thing about these is that they are over twice the capacity and the ripple current rating is over twice as high. So we go from six of these would be 60,000 microfarads, four of these is 88,000. So we have a higher ripple current and a higher capacity with just four. So this actual cost is slightly increased, but with fewer caps, I think we have a better end result. And hopefully, these can be found non-counterfeit much better. So it should run better in that regard. We'll do tests and see. We might even not need four. Who knows? We'll find out. We'll find out, but you can bet that we're going to do what is required to make this inverter run at 12,000 watts. So basically, uh, the four caps uh, is probably going to be more than enough for what we need. And again, testing today, lots of testing throughout the weeks to figure out if this is going to work. Obviously, I have the uh, loads here to be able to do so. And there is one last thing, one more improvement. This is our new Revision C control board here. Look at that massive relay sitting on top there. There's a little hole there so you can see right through there. So the board is tiny, it's absolutely tiny, and then you've got this huge pair of relays that's sitting on top. Now, the Revision A board we learned a lot from, which created the Revision B board, which we learned a lot from, <laughs> yes. which created the Revision C board, which hopefully we won't have to learn anything from. This is hopefully the final, at least final major redesign. I'm sure that since it's gonna come with tweaks, Again, parts, that's another problem. So we have to find alternate suppliers, maybe alternate parts, things like that. So that might adjust the design in a minor sense, but it's not gonna affect the performance of the inverters at all. And um, yeah, so any bullet points you wanna make about these Revision new Revision C boards versus the previous boards? And the Revision C board will be present in our 12,000 watt unit. It will not be present in the 6,000 watt unit. The next 60, the next shipment that we get of 60 
it's not going to be present in that one. We still have the revision B board. However, all the 12Ks and then after the next batch of 6,000 watt inverters will all feature the revision C control board. So I will note that revision C control board is not a radical redesign. It looks somewhat like it, but the core principle and the core functionality remains the same, all the same features as the revision B board. The major reason for the redesign is we finally have a two pull relay for AC input. So this makes 240 volt split phase input not a problem at all. Um, I've done a different driver board, but the design is identical to the previous one, just a different layout, easier to work with. You don't have to solder a header on, just slide it straight into a card edge connector slot. Yes, yeah, small enough you can lose it now, but exactly the same parts. It just plugs right in, still replaceable. Um, Finally, we got rid of the optocouplers. Now we have transformers for feedback, still fully isolated, but these will give a perfect sine wave on the oscilloscope, which I learned, and we move forwards. This ginormous relay is another experiment, you might say, but it's to allow automatic AC input voltage, which is handy for people living in an RV, where, for example, one day you go to your cousin's and you get grandma's extension cord, 120 volt, and then you go to a car park the next day, you get 240 volt 50 amp. Well, this inverter will automatically switch the input based on the voltage coming in, 120 or 240, automatically, no change required. I don't know how the electrical code will work with that, but the feature is here. I've been asked about it several times by RV dwellers, so here it is. A big ginormous relay, I wish I could find a smaller one, but that's the only one I could find. A 120 amp big beast. So beyond that, the basic design is the same. I've added a few more features to it, a few more sensors but nothing that renders the previous boards obsolete by any means. Absolutely, and that's the important part to note is that every time we do something like this, we're not making our old units or previous units obsolete or that we're, not, we're not bringing them, we're not abandoning them, so to speak. So we will still support them. You'll still get a great warranty. If you have the first or second revision, you're still gonna get the great warranty. And there's even a possibility that if we just have a stack of these boards, we can just replace a revision B or revision A with one of these boards with one some caveat. caveats, of course. But the point is, is that we're not going to simply abandon everyone who has a first revision, second revision. We will make it work so that if your inverter needs service, even beyond its warranty, you get a couple years out of it and there's something wrong with it, you need service for it, whatever, we can easily accommodate you. So we are certainly not going to abandon our first uh, couple of rounds of inverters. They do work great. A lot of it is behind the scenes stuff, nothing that you would have to worry about it. It's assembly process. This will definitely make my life a lot easier when it comes to assembly. I know that's where some of the delays came in or some of the extra time it takes to build a GS6 and soon to be a GS12 inverter, which we will be using these boards exclusively. So. Hopefully there won't be any problems there. We're not anticipating it, but as a complete package, we've made some steps in the right direction. And, and I'm confident that between this revision C control board and this, what do you, revision do you want to call that? Revision it's one main board? Probably the revision one, but I'm trying to, I think I'll do revision C, call everything a C package. A C, C package, a C, C package. No, not a, a C, C package. package. A C package. <laughs> So this complete package here, um, this is going to go in our 12,000 watt inverter, and um, I'm excited. I, know I want to see excited. what happens. Um, the one thing that I want to really been chopping at the bit to, to start is that big air unit, and we're hoping that this main board right here will be able to do it. We're, we're sure the transformer can. The transformer barely gets warm when it's loaded down, so we're sure, but we still have some tests to do on the transformer. Obviously, you had made some points about that to make sure. But we're hoping that this main board right here will have absolutely no problem starting that big unit. So, um, among any, you know, among that, this this is um, this is obviously a prototype design, and um, yeah, we're uh, we're hoping that it's going to work out just fine. I'm confident. So we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously. So anything more you want to add, Sid? Let's go test it. Let's go test it. Now we have to install this monster this big huge monster into that inverter over there. Sid's gonna, I'm just gonna sit and watch him. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So can't wait. So anyway, uh, just stay tuned to the channel. And of course, GenTreeSolar.com. 
glad Sid is here and I'm happy that we're finally able to start working on the 12,000 watt unit and hopefully get it up and running. I know some of you are waiting for it, so let's get testing. Take care.